Hi students, in today's session we are going to discuss about the different categories of vacuum pumps and we are going to discuss in detail the constituents and working of our first vacuum pump that is oil sealed rotary vein pump. So let us first go into the classification of vacuum pumps. Vacuum pumps can be divided into two categories. One is throughput pumps and the other one is capture type pumps. In a throughput pump, the gas taken out from the vacuum chamber. Vacuum chamber means the vessel inside which vacuum is to be created. So the gas taken from the vacuum chamber is compressed and then exhausted to the outside atmosphere by the vacuum pump. Suppose this is your pump, then the gas taken from the chamber, vacuum chamber is compressed and then it is given out to the outside atmosphere by the pump. Such pumps are called throughput pumps. Whereas in capture type pumps, the gas taken from the vacuum chamber is um, trapped on the inner walls of the pump itself by means of processes like adsorption, condensation etc. So the gas molecules extracted from the vacuum vessel is trapped on the inner walls of the pump itself. It is not given out to the uh, outer atmosphere. So such pumps are called capture type pumps where the gas molecules are captured or trapped on the inner walls of the pump. So, uh, vacuum pumps are divided into two. One is throughput type pumps where the gas molecules extracted from the vacuum vessel is compressed and exhausted to the outside and the capture type pumps where the uh, gas molecules extracted from the vacuum chamber is not uh, exhausted to the outside. Instead, it is trapped on the walls of the uh, vacuum pump. So, these are the major classification of vacuum pumps and throughput type pumps are again classified into or uh, throughput type pumps as has its examples as positive displacement type pumps and momentum transfer type pumps. So these are the examples of throughput type pumps whereas cryo pumps, sorption pumps, ion pumps all come under capture type pumps. All these are examples of capture type pumps. Now in a positive displacement type pump, we see that uh, the gas which has been extracted from the vacuum vessel uh, undergoes a change in volume during regular intervals of time and it is finally pushed out of the pump. So in a positive displacement type of pump, this suppose this is your pump, inside the pump what happens is you have taken in some amount of gas from the uh, chamber, its volume keeps on changing that is uh, it undergoes say maybe uh, some kind of compression, its uh, volume goes on changing, it gets compressed and finally it is exhausted out of the vacuum pump. So in a positive displacement type of pump, the gas is displaced by causing the volume of the vacuum system to vary at regular intervals. Also here the volume of gas which is cyclically uh, uh, pumped out is isolated from the inlet. This volume of gas is brought to be uh, brought to have no contact with the inlet or it is isolated from the inlet and then it is exhausted out of the vacuum pump. Uh, these are the features of a positive displacement type that is the volume of the gas extracted from the vacuum chamber um, will undergo a volume change periodically and uh, this cyclically displaced volume of gas is isolated from the inlet of the vacuum pump. All these are features of positive displacement type of pump. Now I think the general classification of uh, pumps are clear to you and we will be discussing in detail all these different types of pumps. So you will get to know how they trap, by which 
physical or chemical method they trap the gas molecules so we'll be dealing about cryo pumps option pump ion pumps and all in detail in our coming sections uh, now the general classification i think it's clear to all of you now let us go to our study of our first pump before learning our first pump in detail once again i introduce you to um, or once again i uh, uh, we can revisit what are four pumps you already know what are four pumps or roughing pumps i told you in the last session four pumps are pumps uh, which are used to initially evacuate a vacuum vessel so that uh, the pressure in the vacuum vessel becomes suitable for the operation of a uh, high vacuum pump or a fine vacuum pump okay certain uh, pumps initially require a low vacuum or a low pressure conditions to start its operation certain high vacuum pump adha bhayangara vacuum produce cheyina chela pump galde starting pressure thanne uh, start adu operate cheyanamengil venda minimum pressure എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആ മിനിമം വാക്വം കണ്ടീഷൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് സാധാരണയിൽ നിന്നും ഒരു കുറഞ്ഞ പ്രഷർ ആയിരിക്കണം അവിടെ മുതൽക്കേ ഇതിന് പമ്പിങ് തുടങ്ങാൻ പറ്റുള്ളൂ ആ കുറഞ്ഞ പ്രഷറിൽ നിന്ന് അത് ചേംബറിൻ്റെ അകത്തെ പ്രഷറിനെ വല്ലാതെ കുറച്ച് ലോ ഇറ്റ് പ്രൊഡ്യൂസസ് എ ഹൈലി ലോ വാക്വം കണ്ടീഷൻ ഹൈലി ലോ പ്രഷർ കണ്ടീഷൻ ഓർ എ ഹൈ വാക്വം കണ്ടീഷൻ ഈസ് പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ്ഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദി ആക്ടിവിറ്റി ഓഫ് സെർട്ടൻ ഹൈ വാക്വം പമ്പ്സ് ബട്ട് ടു സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ഓപ്പറേഷൻ ദ ഇനിഷ്യൽ പ്രഷർ ഇൻ ദ ചേംബർ മസ്റ്റ് ബി ലോ ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് കണ്ടീഷൻ ഈസ് അച്ചീവ്ഡ് ബൈ യൂസിങ് എ ഫോർ പമ്പ് സോ ദ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ ഫോർ പമ്പ് ഈസ് ടു പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ദ ഇനിഷ്യൽ ഇവാക്വേഷൻ ഓഫ് ദി വാക്വം വെസ്സിൽ ഓക്കെ so the pump that we are going to learn today in detail that is the oil sealed rotary vane pump is the example of a four pump or a roughing pump so this is our oil sealed rotary vane pump this is the picture of the outer picture of this is how it looks from outside <coughs> the oil sealed rotary vane pump so there are uh, two uh, there is an inlet an outlet a gas ballast valve uh, oil fill valve uh, there is an opening to fill oil to drain oil there is an oil sight glass through which you can see the level of oil here mm, there is an electric motor to rotate the shaft of the rotor and all so we'll learn in detail the constituents of a rotary pump now a rotary pump a oil sealed rotary pump is also uh, the full name is an oil sealed rotary vane pump but in short it can also be called a rotary pump okay now the rotary pump is the example of a positive displacement type pump i told you in a positive displacement type pump there is a uh, periodic variation in the volume of the gas Uh, evacuated from the gas chamber the volume of the gas which you have extracted from the vacuum vessel undergoes a change that is it either undergoes a, a contraction uh, or a compression uh, so that a change in volume take place and and finally that gas is given out through the exhaust port so that is uh, uh, the principle of a positive displacement type pump so rotary pump is the example of a positive displacement type pump okay so uh, that is the first point then what are its constituents what are the parts of a uh, rotary vane pump the rotary vane pump consists of two main parts one is a uh, stator and the other one is a rotor an eccentrically positioned rotor so this is the stator this one the cylinder here now you are seeing a top view of the uh, rotary pump so that actually it is a the stator is a cylinder like this or a metal casing okay so uh, stator is a um, steel chamber or a steel cylindrical chamber the ends of which are closed its two ends are closed by a suitable plate this this end and this end both these ends are closed by a suitable plate uh, and what is the function of this plate it holds the shaft of the rotor that is inside 
uh, the stator there is another cylinder solid cylinder called the rotor and through the middle of this rotor there is a uh, shaft going so this shaft is rotated by means of a rotor uh, by means of a motor and when the shaft rotates the rotor also will rotate i hope you are understanding when the shaft the shaft is not shown in this figure the shaft is going from here through the uh, inside your book okay so when that shaft rotates the entire rotor will also rotate okay i i hope you are understanding you are able to imagine what i am saying okay so uh, so th these are the two parts now the first part is uh, uh, of our uh, uh, oil vein rotary pump is the stator and the stator is a steel cylindrical chamber the ends of which are closed by means of a suitable plate uh, which holds the shaft the shaft is held correctly in between these two plates uh, which holds the shaft of the rotor and the stator is pierced on either side to form the inlet uh, there are two openings in the stator one is the inlet port through which the gas from the vacuum vessel suppose the vacuum vessel is here the uh, uh, gas from the vacuum vessel enters the uh, stator or enters the vacuum pump through the inlet port on this side and this is the exhaust port through which the gas is given out to the atmosphere through the outlet valve so there is a the stator is pierced or it has two openings one is the inlet port and the other is the exhaust port okay and um, so these are the uh, this is this much about the stator the next part is what i told the rotor this is the rotor here again the solid cylinder here so the rotor is always rotating by means of a shaft uh, which drives it there is a shaft going through the center of the rotor that is suppose this is your rotor like this so there is a shaft going through its center so the shaft will rotate and it will rotate this rotor too okay so uh, it is a steel uh, cylinder mounted on a driving shaft and the axis of this rotor is uh, parallel to the axis of the stator that is uh, suppose this is my stator now this is the axis of the stator now uh, the rotor is placed like this is placed like this so that its axis is here so the axis of the stator and rotor are just parallel to each other the axis do not coincide that means if the axis were to coincide then the rotor will be positioned at the center of the stator but here the axis are parallel to each other that means the rotor is eccentrically positioned eccentrically positioned means it is positioned away from the center okay the rotor is positioned away from the uh, center of the stator so the axis of the rotor is parallel to the axis of the stator and it is eccentrically positioned so that the rotor makes contact with the top surface of the stator it makes contact with the top surface of the stator that is the space between the inlet and this is the inlet port and this is the exhaust port so it is in contact with the stator in the space between the inlet and exhaust ports now this line of contact between the stator and the uh, uh, rotor is called top seal top t o p seal s e a l okay uh, so the uh, once again i will repeat the construction of the rotor that is the rotor is a steel cylinder mounted on a driving shaft the axis of the rotor is parallel to the axis of the stator it is parallel to the axis and it is eccentrically positioned so that the rotor makes contact with the top surface of the stator between the inlet and exhaust ports the line of contact between the stator and the rotor is called the top seal now a diametrical slot is cut a diametrical slot is cut between the um, along the diameter of the uh, rotor and inside it there are two veins one is vein a 
this one vein A and the other one is vein B this one vein B so what is done the rotor is cut along its diameter and two veins V A N E S two veins veins means uh, two metal plates are allowed to pass through the diameter of the rotor so the rotor is cut along the diameter and two metal plates a and b it is there continuously so two veins a and b are placed along the diameter of the rotor and they are connected by means of a spring the two veins are connected by means of a spring okay now the speciality of the two veins is that they will always touch the two ends of the stator vein a will touch one end of the stator and vein b will touch the other end that is why the spring is present here so that when the rotor rotates what will happen as the rotor rotates the two veins will begin to move so this end will move like this as the rotor rotates and this end will move like this as the rotor rotates now what will happen the veins a and b when the rotor rotates and reach this position the uh, space or the length here is less than the length along this direction then what will happen the spring will compress to accommodate both the veins did you understand so that is why the two veins are held together by means of a spring in the middle to accommodate the two veins when uh, the when it reaches such positions and at each position what what should be there the vein a should touch the stator and the vein b should also touch the body of the stator so the spring is there so that the uh, two veins touch the body of the stator as the rotor rotates okay at every position it should touch the stator now this is the construction of the um, oil sealed rotary vein pump and this entire setup is submerged in a suitable oil the entire setup is submerged in a suitable oil now what are the properties of this oil the oil should possess high viscosity low vapor pressure high temperature resistance now for this uh, oils like polyphenyl ether and alkyl naphthalene are used as rotary pump oils okay this oil is circulated now what is the function of this oil the function of the oil is it uh, seals the small clearances between the moving parts to prevent the back leakage along these pump pumped parts so it uh, closes the small clearances chele cheriya gap galakke ulladine ellam ee oil fill cheyunu appo avadunnu onnum angotto ingotto air pass cheyadirike air passage idu tadayunu so oil sealing is done oil seals the clearances s e a l parayana manasilavundo it seals the clearances oil will seal the clearance between these Uh, between the moving parts okay that is the function of the oil and oil also lubricates and cools the pump it will also helps all these consists of moving parts in a rotary pump and it lubricates the moving parts of the pump and it cools the pump so these are the functions of the oil oil seals the small clearances between the moving parts it lubricates and cools the pump so these are the parts of or constituents of a rotary pump so i hope this is clear to all of you now the functioning of the oil seal rotary pump we'll discuss it in the next video okay if you have any doubts please do contact thank you